Hello everyone and welcome back to Towergate. It is Towergate day number 1,279-1279, November 13th, 2020, Friday. That's right, it's Friday the 13th. That can go either way, right? <laughs> I'm generally not a suspicious person, but Friday the 13th, a lot going on right now. Um, so, you know, yesterday uh, it was my intention to upload a video on Thursday, but... Uh, around 6 30 7 o'clock something like that as I was actually you know finishing up doing the research getting my notes together uh, YouTube went down and uh, it looked like it was a global thing I was looking at the map so it wasn't everywhere all over the world but it was in various spots and places all over the world that YouTube went down and uh, I don't know when you guys YouTube came back but my YouTube didn't come back last night to around 10 30 11 o'clock uh, Thursday night 10 30 11 o'clock on Thursday night so by that point, I'd already had to uh, throw in the towel. So that's why I didn't get a video up on Thursday, in addition to all the other things going on. But happy to get a video up today. And so uh, today, is, I want to uh, just kind of uh, bring us up to date on where we are with all the things coming up, uh, all the things that are going on uh, with uh, the lawsuits and the election, and uh, talk about that little uh, meeting and some things that went down on Monday that I find very curious. And uh, let's see what else have we got. Yeah, a little bit on McCabe's hearing. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with uh, the first thing, which is uh, something I've been just kind of thinking about for a few days. Um, so this past Monday, at the beginning of the week, of course, we were all ready on that Monday. We knew there were going to be, uh, you know, some lawsuits filed on that Monday. It was going to be a, kind of a pretty big day for all that stuff. But something else happened on Monday that really didn't get much headline news that I thought was pretty interesting. Um, First of all, of course, you know, uh, Trump fires Esper. Now, since then, uh, he's fired three other top officials at the Pentagon. So that means Esper and three other top officials at the Pentagon fired. And what's even more interesting about that is the person who Trump selected, who I've never heard of, don't know anything about him, but he comes from the deep state, basically. Uh, he's a career bureaucrat uh, in the... Uh, uh, Pentagon De uh, Department of Defense um, he's named as the successor for Esper but what's more interesting about that is that um, um, his chief of staff the person named to be his chief of staff is uh, Kash Patel <laughs> Kash Patel of course was Devin Nunes um, chief investigator his lead investigator through all the Spygate stuff. So he's the guy who knows all the ins and outs of the Spygate stuff. Um, he was one of the main sources for Lee Smith's book. Um, and so he is a definitely a key insider to Trump and Nunes and all these guys. So I'm thinking, you know, why would they, because you know the deep state certainly can't be happy with having Cash Patel because he definitely doesn't come out of the deep state, the Pentagon, the DOD, or anything like that. Um, so you gotta wonder why Trump would put Cash Patel into a key position like that, chief of staff to the new guy coming in to replace Esper, who's a deep stater who was probably plotting a coup. So um, I think that probably what's going on there is that they wanted to have someone very close to Trump um, uh, who, who they could trust, basically to keep an eye on this new deep stater that replaced Esper. And this is just my own speculation. Uh, obviously CNN and places like that, they're, they're suggesting that, that, that Trump's getting rid of these top people at DOD, at the Pentagon, because he's planning some sort of a military coup to stay in power, when actually I think what's going on here is that Trump is trying to prevent some sort of a military coup by way of trying to prematurely remove him from office um, before all the legal issues can be settled. If this gets kicked into the Congress, if the legal issues cannot be settled in the courts by a certain date uh, and the electors are not uh, able to, or the, they can't certify the election or the electors uh, uh, are then rejected by the state legislatures and they try to replace them with, with other electors to cast votes for Trump, that this could put us into some sort of a constitutional crisis, and that um, some people believe that uh, the deep state will use the military 
uh, to try to stage some sort of a military coup to oust Trump, uh, to bring in Biden or something like that. I, I think there's a lot of paranoia uh, and suspicion and things like that probably going on behind the scenes because there's a lot of moves that are being made while Trump and his team are fighting lawsuits. I think they are getting wind of a lot of things that are happening as if he's already gone, which he's not. And I think that that's probably, in my opinion, why they put Cash Patel in such a sensitive key position uh, where he would know all the goings on of what's happening with DOD and you know, the Pentagon. That would be my guess. But um, <clears throat> then we had, but let's just think about what happened on Monday. So Trump cans Esper, replaces him with, I guess, the next in line, who would be a deep stater, but then puts in Cash Patel to be his chief of staff, which, you know, certainly wasn't this guy's choice. <laughs> uh, certainly not. So that was a very interesting uh, move that raises some suspicions. Um, and then you have Attorney General Barr. He puts out this statement saying that he wants the FBI to investigate any you know serious claims of you know voter fraud, election fraud, or anything like that. And that triggers this guy Pilger, or Pilger, however you pronounce it, whose job is to ensure election integrity. And uh, obviously, based on what's going on, he didn't do a very good job. So we could have understood if Barr would have fired him or the president would have fired him and said, hey, Mr. Pilger, your job was to ensure the integrity of elections and, and, and to be investigating things and such. And uh, boy, did you ever fail. You're fired. But that's not what happened. Barr came out and makes the statement uh, through the DOJ spokesperson. I don't think he made the statement personally in a speech, but... Barr put out the statement through the spokesperson at the DOJ that the FBI wants him to go take a look at any serious allegations regarding voter fraud, election fraud, and things like that. That is what uh, gets this guy Pil Pilger or Pilger to quit. Now, this guy Pilger, he's a bad guy. He was um, he's the guy that you see if you go back and watch the IRS hearing to Lois Lerner, you will see he's the guy sitting directly behind Lo Lois Lerner to her left, behind her left shoulder. He's the guy sitting there. He's a deep stater, and he was caught up in all that. He's a serious anti-Trumper, uh, Obama administration appointee, deep stater, the whole nine yards. So this guy Pilger quits. He quits. And probably we can assume uh, at this point, because we haven't heard that he was fired, we weren't told that he was forced out or anything like that. It appears he quit on his own. Um, but it it, it looks like what happened here is Barr kind of went around him because this would be like Barr going around him because normally investigations would go through the normal process through the bureaucracies and it would be this guy Pilger that would be the one that would be responsible for dealing with these issues. But essentially what Barr did was make an end run around him using his authority as attorney general to go over and around Pilger to direct these to direct the FBI to do these investigations that normally should have been something that would have been in Pilger's or Pilger's, um, you know, area of, uh, of um, control. So he may have just gotten ticked off or whatever and, and probably disagreed with, with Barr's decision to investigate this stuff, obviously. He's an anti-Trumper. And um, so that was a kind of an interesting thing that happened as well. So you get Trump fires Esper. Uh, brings in this this new guy, but then puts in Kosh Patel to be his chief of staff. We assume to keep an eye on him. Barr then puts out the statement, which results in this guy Pilger quitting. Then, shortly after that, this is all happening before lunchtime. All this went down before lunch, before noon. Then, Barr, along with Gina Haspel, go over and have a meeting, a private meeting with Mitch McConnell. And the way that, that this is worded, the two different stories that I read on this sound as if sounds as if Barr and Haspel were together, that Barr and Haspel went together to talk to McConnell. First I had heard it was just Barr went to talk to McConnell. And then it's then we hear it's Barr and Haspel went to talk 
to McConnell. What did they go to talk to McConnell about? You see, um, there's something going on, and we don't know exactly what that is, but I suspect that there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. And I ex assume it has something to do with a power struggle, a power play, something to do with power and who's going to get it, who's going to hold on to it, and that type of thing. I think there's a lot going on behind the scenes that we don't know about. Trump's been pretty quiet other than a little bit of Twitter activity. Um, he hasn't been out there as much as you might expect. We had heard that he was going to announce some rallies and go out and do some rallies. At this time, I've not heard any announcements of any rallies. So we're getting a lot of mixed signals, a lot of mixed messages. There's a lot of confusion. I'm not really sure what's going on. But certainly these are not normal things. These are not normal things that are happening. And there's definitely something going on with the Pentagon and the DOD. Uh, which would be a key player in any type of an effort to push Trump out. Um, uh, that, that, I think, would come into play. So I think there may be some defense going on here. As far as what Barr is doing or whether any of this was being coordinated with Trump, I don't know. What he would be going to see McConnell. Remember, it's unusual that Barr would go see McConnell normally McConnell would go see Barr. I mean, that's how that would work. Um, and why Gina Haspel? Why would he be with him? I don't know the answers to any of these questions. I'm just throwing it out there, so in case you don't know about these things happening. And it all happened on Monday morning. Now, it is Friday, and I've not seen anything specific that has happened in the, in the past three or four days that's given me an, any indication of what did happen or why that all happened. I still don't understand why these things all went down on Monday morning with Barr and Trump firing these people and doing all these things. I don't know. There's 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 just nothing there to, to give me any information. And Trump's being pretty low key for Trump. So I think we just have to keep watching. I think there's a lot of things in flux right now, and I also believe there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. Uh, I also believe there's a lot of propaganda being thrown out. I think there's a lot of hopium being thrown out. I think there's a lot of um people with um, different motives. Um, there's people with motives who are doing things that they're, they're making it appear that they're doing it for one reason when they're actually doing it for another. And I'll try to try to drill down on that in a second. But um, anyway, I just think that there's a lot of things going on right now that are hard to explain. Uh, it's not clear to me exactly what's going on, other than there's a lot of um, paranoia, confusion, and there's obviously some kind of power struggle going on for people who are trying to map out their plan for how they're going to assume power. And I think Trump and probably just a very few loyalists around him trying to figure out how they're going to hold on to power in the face of what they believe is a coup. And I believe the same. I believe this is a coup. And uh, I believe there was tremendous election fraud. I don't know to the extent of it. Um, I, I just don't know. But um, I do believe something. Uh, things just don't add up when you, when you, when you look at it. Um, the way the election went down. We've already talked about all these things before. I, I don't have time to go into them again. But... The election is awfully strange, the way we had just a few key swing states, battleground states, the states everyone knew the election would come down to, behaved in a manner totally different than the other 43 or 44 states. Very, very strange. Um, so now I want to talk about what's been going on over the past two or three days um, that I'm trying to decide which category to put it in, whether it's something to really get excited about or hopeful about uh, or optimistic about or whether it, or whether we're being propagandized and uh, gaslighted by the Republican Party. So Trump sends out this tweet yesterday where he says in this tweet, Dominion deleted 2.2 million Trump votes nationwide, 221,000 votes were switched for Trump to Biden. 
switched from Trump to Biden, 221,000 votes, with 207 million Trump votes being deleted. Okay, so that's a Trump tweet. So, okay, so a lot of people are throwing out a lot of numbers. That's cool that you know, Trump would tweet that out. But if they've got that evidence of that, they need to give it to a court and they need to do it quickly. Tweeting about it, there's nothing we can do about it. That's nice to tweet that out. But if you can't actually go into court and prove that, it's not really beneficial. Uh, then we have Lynn Wood going on Howie Carr, also on Thursday, and he says he's 100% sure Trump will be reelected president. He says Joe Biden and people like him um, who have been trying to steal the election will go to jail. He says that what happened was is that Trump won much bigger than they thought, which forced them to have to cheat much more than they thought, and that is going to be their undoing. He says that there is irrefutable, irrefutable evidence of that and irrefutable evidence of fraudulent votes. Okay. Um, again, that's Lynn Wood, and uh, he's a pretty highly respected uh, attorney. Uh, we generally regard as a pretty honest man. And that's, again, that's wonderful news. It's wonderful news. But going on a radio show and saying that is not the same as going into a court and proving it. You got to prove it. You can make these allegations till the cows come home. And uh, it doesn't matter. And the time is getting short. Some of these states have to certify this election I think Georgia in seven days has to certify, and then all these other states within a week or two of that, they have to certify. Most of these dates are before the end of November. <clears throat> now, that's not when the electors report. Uh, that is December the 14th. I'm talking about the states. <clears throat> so if they have all this evidence, and of course you see Sidney Powell on Lou Dobbs making the same case, well, we know that this system was changing these votes and then of course hammer and scorecard and all this stuff that's all fantastic information gives us all optimism and hope and all that sort of thing but you know what unless you can actually go into court and prove that it it doesn't you know it doesn't serve the purpose of making the case to to see to it that Trump is is reelected based on the fact that there was election fraud it does serve another purpose but not the purpose that we're all interested in it serves another purpose that other people would be interested in. Um, now, we did have a ruling that came down from uh, this federal judge in Pennsylvania. On Thursday, this Pennsylvania judge uh, has ordered that all segregated ballots in the state of Pennsylvania should be tossed. Uh, and uh, this would uh, mean that this uh, crooked secretary of state, this Kathy Bookvar, um, According to the judge, she lacked statutory authority to override election law. We've all been hearing this for a few days, and now we've just had a federal judge confirm that. That's very good news. Um, and she says that the state may not count ballots where the voters needed to provide proof of identification and failed to, uh, and failed to do so by November the 9th. Okay, so... That's a that's important. It's it's a good ruling, but it's not probably going to affect the number of votes that you would need to overturn Pennsylvania, because now we're talking about what thirty thousand votes or something. You know, we're talking about probably hundreds, maybe a few thousand votes. What I was hoping for was for her to say no votes could be counted after election night at 8 p.m., but that's not what she, what she says. So um, this is a good decision. It helps some, but it's not, it's not the game changer. Now, maybe it leads to a ruling by the Supreme Court that is the game changer, but that will be the only type of ruling that the court could put out that would be a game changer there, would be that any votes received after the polls closed in each state, those votes cannot be counted. That would be a game changer. But that's not the ruling we've had so far. It's still a positive sign, but it's not enough. 
Um, we also had a very interesting statement from Kaylee McInerney on Thursday. She did a press conference and she said that uh, America will hear from President Trump at the right moment. Again, kind of setting up this situation where there's something big about to happen. Now, for those of us who've been following the Spygate story for three years, how many times have we been here? Well, we've been, had someone build us up to some great promise that some great big thing was going to be revealed and the whole plot was going to be exposed and the, and the plotters were going to go to jail and justice was going to be served and all these things were going to happen and they never have and may never will. And it kind of feels like I've been down this road a few too many times. We also have Rudy going on Lou Dobbs, telling Lou Dobbs that there were 650,000 votes that were illegally counted in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. Excellent news. Excellent news. Can you prove it? So far, in these court cases, you know, maybe they're making these arguments in these court cases, but none of these rulings have come down so far. Now that would be a game changer. 650,000 votes would be a game changer in Pennsylvania. Any of these things were true about Pennsylvania would give the election to Trump. Well, give Pennsylvania to Trump. If he doesn't want Arizona, I don't know what his path to, to pre the presidency is. He would have to get, he would, if he don't get Arizona, he needs Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Um, I don't know that he'll get all three of those. He might get two of, the, two of those three, but I'm not sure all three. So in Arizona, he's not keeping pace with where he needs to be. As the votes come in, he needs to be getting about the low 60% range of the remaining votes that need to be counted, and he's not. He's getting in the low 50% range. He's winning the majority, but he's still quite a few points off where he would need to be to catch Biden in Arizona. So the vote count's not going our way there. If he doesn't win Arizona, somebody better pull a rabbit out of their hat because I don't know where the path is. If you lose Arizona, you have to pretty much run the table on everything else. I've already given in North Carolina and Alaska, that's fine. He would have to win Georgia, and I think it's likely after a recount he would, but right now he's behind there. They would have to overturn Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin if he if he cannot uh, hold down Arizona. So um, <clears throat> I guess my point is here, <clears throat> we have all these people coming out who generally are representing Trump, and giving us all this information about all these things they know, these great revelations from Linwood to Sidney Powell to Ruley, Rudy and all the rest. But so far, if they have all this information, if they have all this evidence, it's not being shown to the courts. Or if it is, they haven't ruled on it yet. Um, and I wonder how much of this is hopium. You see, these people are politicians. <laughs> They're political people. And this is what they do. And we know that regardless of what happens with Trump, quite honestly, what's probably more important than Trump getting reelected to most of these establishment Republicans and people in power in Washington associated with Republicans because of the jobs and the money and the, and the opportunities and all that, it's holding on to those two Senate seats in uh, Georgia. And so I'm wondering if all this hopium is being put out there so that Trump's base doesn't become dejected and depressed and that they don't show up for the two Senate seats in Georgia for that race, which will be in January. I'm wondering if they're putting out all this stuff to try to keep people hopeful, optimistic, and motivated to continue donating and to continue rallying or protesting or whatever you want to call it to keep the Republican base fired up through the beginning of January up to these, up to this special election in Georgia. In other words, all this information that may be getting put out to us may be just to keep us pumped up to fight, to win back those, or to win those two seats in Georgia, that that may be what all this is about. And that for all we know, these people believe that, that Trump's chances of being reelected, winning the election are zero or close to zero. 
that they really don't have the hard evidence they need to prove what they need to prove to overturn the number of votes that you would need to overturn to swing the election back into Trump's favor. And they're concerned that if they come out and just say that, say, hey, it looks pretty bleak right now, Trump's chances now are very, very slim, that that Republicans will be sort of deflated, they won't donate, uh, they'll lose their energy and swing the momentum back to the Democrats and allow them to take those two Senate seats in Georgia. So I'm wondering if all this hopium that's being blown our direction is really more about keeping us pumped so that they can win those two seats in Georgia having having to do a lot more of that than Trump actually having a shot at winning the election. What we need to see is the evidence of all these things that these people, many of whom I respect a great deal, uh, they need to produce this evidence to the courts if they have it. <clears throat> if they have that evidence, they need to produce it to the courts. Time is running out. It's time for them to back up what they're saying with some serious evidence to the courts. Or this is all going to be uh, all for naught. And I don't like having sunshine blown up my ass for any reason. So I, re I remain faithful and optimistic that things are going to turn out well. But I'm also a realist, and I see where things are going. So if something doesn't, if something uh, real substantial uh, isn't brought forward soon in a legal way, uh, I think that the uh, clock, the sand is running just about out of the hourglass at this point. Uh, they got about another week. If they can't get this figured out, if they can't drop something fairly major in the form of evidence of some major election fraud, systematic fraud, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't see it going very well. And uh, although I do think holding on to the seats in Georgia is important, but I don't want to be bullshitted uh, about it. So it looks like I'm running a little low here on battery, so I'm probably not going to get to the, my McCabe comments, so I'm probably going to have to hold off on that. But um, anyway, that's what I have for you. Uh, I'll be back uh, most likely either Saturday or Sunday, uh, and uh, one of those two days, either Saturday or Sunday with another video, and we'll see where we are then. Thank you for tuning in, you guys. Keep the faith. See you. Bye.